Lego fans! It's been ages since I unboxed a vintage Harry Potter set and this was a truly amazing find. Today my time turner is wound back to 2002 and I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 4729 Dumbledore's Office from Lego Harry Potter. This 446 piece set themed on Harry Potter and a Chamber of Secrets was released in 2002 and sold for 50 US dollars or 45 of your Great British Pounds. 20 years later it's worth about $72 used or in a sealed box like this about $250. The box is a little creased but the tabs are perfectly intact and ready to be torn open. The 446 piece part count includes three magical yellow faced minifigures. We've got a HP005 Harry Potter who appeared in eight of the early sets, a HP008 Albus Dumbledore who was in three sets, and finally a HP022 Professor Minerva McGonagall who only appeared in this set and a rare promotional item. The box has this very old school design and even features the Harry Potter logo from the first two movies. Not only that, we have a picture of the young wizard himself. He was so tiny! The set recreates Dumbledore's office as featured in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Harry is summoned to the headmaster's office after being found with a petrified Sir Nicholas de Mimsy Porpington and Hufflepuff Justin Finch Fletchley. Over on the back of the box we journey back to a more innocent time when Lego encouraged us to build our own models. Inspiration includes a classroom complete with winged dragon and an interesting building with Harry and Dumbledore exchanging magical chopskis. Lego's marketing team would like to remind us that we can combine multiple sets to make a magnificent over the top Hogwarts castle complete with grounds. In fact you can check out my video of just how to recreate this. Ignoring the temptation to revisit the flash driven horror that was the HarryPotter.com website from 2002, we come to the moment of truth, the point of no return. So here's everything that came inside this time capsule of LEGO history. We got a 62 page instruction booklet which also includes some instructions on how to make alternate builds. I've got to build me one of them dragons. We also have a promotional poster showing off all of the 2001 and 2002 sets. Plus 8 perfectly pristine poly bags of pieces. A large sand green roof element and two 8x16 old dark grey base plates. I'm going to go ahead and build the 4729 Dumbledore's office from 2002 and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build. And here is the completed 4729 Dumbledore's office from Lego Harry Potter. Build time today was 1 hour and 8 minutes and what a magically magnificent marvel this miniature model makes. We're going to start out by taking a look around Dumbledore's office, then we'll take a detailed look at each minifigure and check out how they compare to their on-screen counterparts. For a 446 piece set, the end result is quite an impressive piece. 
The footprint is nice and compact, and the three level build gives this an impressive amount of height. It stands about 37 centimeters or just under 15 inches high. We venture inside Dumbledore's office for the first time in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in 2002. Dumbledore is played by actor Richard Harris for the second and final time. Sadly, he passed away age 72 in October, just nine days before the movie's release. Harry is taken to Dumbledore's office by Minerva McGonagall after matters are taken out of her hands following the discovery of the petrified, nearly headless Nick and Justin Finch Fletchley. Dumbledore's office is located in the Headmaster's Tower, which protrudes from the marble staircase tower high in the rooftops of Hogwarts. The office is reached by the Griffin stairwell, which as you might expect is guarded by a griffin or whatever this thing is. Okay, it might not be a very convincing griffin, but you get the idea. Lego basically attached a couple of dragon wings and a dark grey horse battle helmet and called it good. On either side of the griffin, which looks a little bit like a dismembered Thestral, we have some really nice curved pieces. These 4x4x6 four by four by quarter cylinders with stonewall pattern are exclusive to this and the 4709 Hogwarts Castle. That came out in 2001 and of course if you check out my channel you will find a review. Illuminating the entrance we have a couple of torches complete with trans orange flames. Now of course you can't just go barging into Dumbledore's office, you need to know the password. Take it away McGonagall! Sherbet Lemon Sherbet Lemons will be familiar to my British viewers who will know these as delicious lemon flavoured hard candies with a fizzy powder centre. In American English, sherbet is more often used to describe what we would call sorbet, a fruit flavoured ice dessert. You'll notice that each side of the Griffin stairwell is hinged which gives us a good idea as to what happens next. On the front we have this old dark grey scorpion which I'm pretty sure didn't appear in the movies and if we give it a little tug, we can imagine the doors opening as if by magic. With the stairwell opened up we find some more stuff to take a look at. Just in case Dumbledore forgets he has a parliament of owls at his service, we have this nicely decorated mailbox. For no immediately apparent reason this pivots through 360 degrees and the door opens up to reveal some printed correspondence. On the other side we find an interesting bookcase complete with some magical artifacts. Here we have a really nice and brand new chrome antique brass key. The set comes with a pair of these attached to a piece of sprue. Let's just say that was an expensive part until I tore off the keys. There are three things stashed away on the bookshelf and these can be easily removed. I'm not entirely sure what these are meant to be but each comes with a printed 1x2 tile. There's a trans blue tile with printed gold stars, what looks like the ingredients to some kind of spell which includes a bone, a spider and then a bunch more gold stars. And the magical doohickey with the key attached has this 1x2 printed letter complete with wax seal. Hidden away behind the Chernobyl griffin we have a very appropriate spiral staircase. Illuminating the otherwise dark stairwell we have a pair of trans orange flames. Everything looks better with fire. With the spiral staircase retracted you can also see a couple of spears lurking in the background. Another interesting feature hidden away behind the stairs are these trans purple elements. This creates a useful escape route just in case the Death Eaters come calling. In the movie, the staircase acts as some kind of magical spiral escalator. It doesn't work exactly the same in the Lego set, but it does make a nice little action feature. Unfortunately, when Harry reaches the top of the stairs, things don't work out quite so well. I think a trip to Madame Pomfrey might be needed. Now you might notice that the upper level is sitting on these 1x2 45 degree slope pieces. These allow the upper level of Dumbledore's office to be removed providing some modular capabilities. It also makes this ever so slightly easier to film. The tower uses more of these printed quarter cylinders and these are hinged to give us access to the office. Sitting on top we have these really nice decorative curved railings. Before we set foot inside Dumbledore's office, let's take a moment to appreciate the exterior. At the top we have the large sand green roof piece complete with turrets. I really like the textured finish which shows the shape of the roof tiles. Moving down the tower we find an elegant arched window. Check out the black window pane complete with twisted bars. Here we find a protruding sand green cone attached to an axle. We'll come back to that in two shakes of a hippogriff's tail. Another curious architectural anomaly is the key mounted on the outside of the building. It matches the one I tore off the piece of sprue earlier in the video. Above that, and looking rather nice in the studio lights, is the red and green stained glass window. 
I really like the detail on the outside of the building, and it's a shame that you don't get to see it if you display it as LEGO intended. This is not quite as impressive as Dumbledore's office as portrayed in the movie. What we do have is Dumbledore's desk, chair, and a few magical items. Awaiting an owl to whisk it away, we have another one of these printed letters. Maybe some disapproving words for Cornelius Fudge. Sitting on Dumbledore's desk instead of way up on a shelf, I think this may be the sorting hat. Be in your bonnet, Potter. There's also a flask containing some mysterious green liquid, and what appears to be a Herbology textbook. We get some really nice printed books with the early sets, and this is no exception. Just check out this vicious vine here with the big head, red eyes, and big teeth. On the spine here, we've got some kind of fungus with the oh, slimy cap there, and then a number of different toadstools on the back. Now, this does kind of rattle, so let's see what's inside. And we do have a tile inside which has, hang on, uh, yeah, it looks like some kind of spell with some gold star prints on there, so yeah, really nice thing. Dumbledore's desk also hides a secret compartment. If we flip the desk open, you can see we've got another one of these one by one tiles with the spell book printed on it. Next to the desk is Dumbledore's very regal and throne like chair. This actually pivots from side to side. Venturing deep into the office, we find the other side of that stained glass window and Dumbledore's shelves of supplies. It's a really nice printed piece and was made exclusively for these early LEGO Harry Potter sets. This panel hides a secret and can actually rotate to reveal a hidden key. I suspect this may be the key for the door on the third floor corridor behind which we find Fluffy the Cerberus. Finally, at the very top of Dumbledore's office, we have this very impressive looking piece of magical machinery. I believe this is what Dumbledore was attending to when Harry visited his office for the first time. Remember that protruding axle from earlier? This causes the mystical magical mechanism to rotate on two axes. The really nice thing about this is that we get an exclusive trans purple dish printed with moons, stars and magic symbols. The pieces on top are a complete mystery, but I think it's fair to say this is probably some kind of astrological instrument. And when you're studying the stars by moonlight, what better light source than a couple of naked flames? You gotta admit it, the man's got style. While it's commendable that LEGO included some details such as the key to Fluffy's door, and also the fountain of knowledge that is Sorty McHatface, they did miss one detail from this iconic scene. On Harry's first visit to Dumbledore's office, he meets Forks the Phoenix. I know LEGO make one of these because here it is. This comes from set number 4730, the Chamber of Secrets, one of my personal favourites. He's beautifully moulded from red and orange plastic and would have looked great inside Dumbledore's office. But LEGO went all mean on us. Whilst the LEGO version of Dumbledore's office may not be as detailed as it was portrayed in the movie, it is a really nice LEGO building and fits with the overall LEGO Harry Potter theme. But that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. This set also comes with three magically magnificent minifigures. We've got a HP005 Harry Potter, HP008 Albus Dumbledore, and HP022 Professor Minerva McGonagall. First up we have the boy what lived, this is Harry James Potter. He appeared in seven of the 2001 and 2002 sets, plus a rare promotional item that only came out in Asia. As Harry is a very common minifigure, he's only worth about four or five dollars. Harry comes with one of these old style wands which is nearly as big as he is. It's about 11 inches long, made of holly, and has a phoenix feather core. Nice and supple. The legs are standard minifigure legs in this light grey colour and otherwise unremarkable. The torso print is a little more exciting and shows Harry wearing a very baggy school jumper. Underneath you can see a white shirt and Gryffindor coloured tie. And we have some really nice metallic gold printing, especially on the Gryffindor badge which seems to be on his stomach for some reason. There is no printing on the back of the torso because it wasn't really a thing in 2002. We do however have printing on this rather fancy cape. The lining is covered in stars which may indicate that this is meant to be the cloak of invisibility. We also for some inexplicable reason have a copyright symbol. The facial print was used widely in early LEGO Harry Potter sets and features Harry's trademark glasses, lightning shaped scar and yellow complexion. LEGO didn't start using the flesh coloured faces until 2004. The hair is a very good choice and looks very shabby and unkempt as described in the books. While the minifigure may be unmistakably Harry Potter, it doesn't really resemble the Harry we saw in the movie. 
The facial expression may be a good likeness, but the uniform is completely different. He may not be very rare, and he may not look like the character in the movie, but he's just Harry, and that's just perfect. Next we have Professor Albus Percival Wolfric Brian Dumbledore, Order of Merlin First Class. This is the HP008 version, and also appears in 4707 Hagrid's Hut, and the original 4709 Hogwarts Castle. He also appears in the Uber Rare minifigure collection set, but we won't talk about that. As a bonus fact, Dumbledore is an 18th century word for a bumblebee, but I digress. Dumbledore is dressed in these rather fancy purple robes. Unlike the rather plain Harry Potter, we do have some printed legs. Here we see the hem of the robes with gold detail, a green belt, and some kind of coin purse. We'll have to remove the beard to get to the torso printing, so we'll take a look at that first. It's a snazzy grey beard and moustache combo, but I can't help feeling this should be white. This all-in-one piece also provides some whiskers around the side and joins up nicely with the hair. With the beard removed, Dumbledore looks about 100 years younger, and we can take a look at those robes. If I didn't know better, I would say Dumbledore is auditioning for a role in Saturday Night Fever. But I guess staying alive would not be a good song choice for Albus Dumbledore. Too soon, LEGO fans? I'm not certain if he's meant to be wearing something underneath the robes, but it certainly looks like a bare chest to me. A very similar version of Dumbledore comes out in 2004 with flesh coloured skin and retains the same yellow chest. With the beard removed, we can get a much closer look at the face. Here we see the bushy eyebrows, the signature half moon glasses, and I love the way these are cross hatched to show a reflection. The hair is long and straight and grey, which is a contrast to the white wig worn by Richard Harris in the movie. Providing a dramatic backdrop to the hair, we have one of these brand new purple capes. Well, it's not brand new, but it only just came out of the box. When we consider the resemblance of the minifigure to the character in the movie, this is a bit of a fail. The robes are the wrong colour, the hair is the wrong colour, and where is Dumbledore's hat? Setting aside the obvious differences, this is a good looking minifigure. In terms of value, he's worth about $7 used, and in new condition, I guess like this one, he's worth about $14. Finally, we have Head of Gryffindor House and Teacher of Transfiguration, Professor Minerva McGonagall. This is the HP022 version, and she only appears in this set and the super rare promotional item. As such, she's worth about $14 in use condition, or about $19 new. Her robes are pretty faithful to the costume in the movie, and have some really nice metallic gold detail. I really like the continuity of printing from the torso down onto the leg piece, and this is further accentuated by the emerald green cape. Snazzy the robes may be, but the facial print is pure ugly. I know Dame Maggie Smith has some wrinkles, but this is a bit of an insult. I guess she's meant to have hair sticking out from under the hat, but this just looks odd. The hat is a nice element, especially in this emerald green colour, but it does seem to be missing the feather we saw in the movie. In terms of matching the on-screen character, I think this is the best of the three minifigures. The face is decidedly off, but the costume is very close indeed. Comparing the 2002 McGonagall to the 2021 version, she has changed an awful lot. She also seems to have shrunk as many of us do in old age. The difference in height is all down to that skirt element, which is a half brick shorter. Another thing you'll notice is that the older version is missing that structural tube. Of the three minifigures, I think Minerva McGonagall has to be my favourite. The costume is really nicely done, but the face not so much. For a set focused on Harry's first visit to Dumbledore's office, the choice of these three minifigures is absolutely perfect. So that was set number 4729, Dumbledore's Office, a 2002 set from LEGO Harry Potter! This is a really nice set, and it was an honour and a privilege to be able to unbox and share this with you. I also like the appearance of the headmaster's office from the outside, and it's neat that you can combine this with other 2001 and 2002 LEGO Harry Potter sets. The early LEGO Harry Potter minifigures do lack some of the on-screen realism, but they are charming character recreations, especially with those yellow faces. I've had a blast unboxing this almost 20 year old LEGO Harry Potter set, and I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and let me know what you thought in the comments. Also check out at Jeremy Herbert Official on Instagram. You'll get to peek behind the scenes of my studio, watch some short videos that don't make it to YouTube, and check out what I'm working on right now. More vintage LEGO Harry Potter reviews are coming up soon, so be sure to subscribe to keep the magic alive. Thanks a million for checking out the review, stay safe, 
and I'll see you on the next build video.